Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike and tech-related questions. And as ever, you can submit your questions down in the comments section below using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll do our best to answer them. So without further ado, let's kick off. First question this week comes from the H2O Hammer, who says, guys, can you please do a test with Tannis tires? I'd love to see them in direct comparison with other tires. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, Tannis makes solid tires. The advantages of these are that, well, in theory, you don't get any punctures because it's solid, there's no air in it. But the disadvantage is quite quick and easy to explain, and that is the feel of them and the rolling resistance is much, much higher. So a tire, like a, you know, a solid tire like a Tannis tire, it's third party, people have tested it, and yes, the rolling resistance is significantly higher than a pneumatic tire or a tubeless tire. And consequently, that's why you don't see widespread use of them. It, it, you can feel the difference when you ride them, how, how considerably slower they are. But for certain applications, yeah, great. You know, you don't get punctures if you live in a really puncture prone place and you're not that bothered about going super quick. They could be worth, uh, worth your time. Uh, next question comes from Sim Krug. Sim Krub, who says, do I need to adjust my riding position or style when using a shorter saddle, like a Seller Italia Boost? Well, <laughs> got one down here. So this is a Seller Italia Boost saddle, and it is essentially similar to an equivalent, you know, longer-nosed saddle version. So, for example, this is a, an SLR Boost, but the standard SLR is the same profile, it just has a bit of a longer nose section. Now, to answer your question, if you switch to a shorter nose saddle, in the case of Seller Italia saddles, no, you should keep your saddle in the same equivalent position relative to the back of the saddle, as it would be if it were a longer nosed one. And you should measure the height of your saddle from a point which Seller Italia calls the BRP, and that is the point at which the saddle becomes 70 millimeters wide um, across here, which is about, I haven't got my tape measure with me, but it's about there. Measure from down there, down to your bottom bracket, and that's the saddle height that they recommend you use. So if you mounted this compared to a normal longer nose saddle, it would be in the same position, but the longer nose saddle would finish a bit further on over the bottom bracket, this would be further back. The idea being behind these short nose saddles in Seller Italia's mind is that the, the nose is actually not required and the idea is you sit in, in the saddle. I hope that answers your question. Uh, next we've got a question from JM Cycling Videos who says, I'm going to be racing a short flat 10, uh, 10 kilometer time trial in a few months and a TT bike isn't in the budget at the moment. What do you reckon is faster an aero bike with an integrated aero handlebar, uh, but no clip-ons on it, or a non-aero bike that's got a round bar so you can put clip-on tri-bars onto it? Well, it's a very good question, and, well, it, it could be either. The only way you'd know for sure in that specific case study is to test it, uh, as it could be either. On, if I was a betting man, I would guess that the tri-bars would make a bigger difference um, because position is everything. But that said, if you can sustain a really low and aero aggressive position on an aero bike uh, with your hands in that aero position on the HUDs, which we've shown in wind, the wind tunnel before, you can get a very low CDA, especially if you practice being like a, like a turtle, and getting your head in really low and holding that in like that. That can, that can be very, very aero. Um, whereas it might not be as aero for you if you're on tri bars, so yeah, you never know for sure. But the best thing in your case, considering it's in a few months, is you've got plenty of time to test it. So perhaps test both setups back to back on the same day, on the same course, uh, and try and ride at a power that you can sustain and see if, uh, well, which one's fastest. Uh, next question is from Michael Kelly, who says, Hi GCN, I would like to change my gears to climb some big classic climbs in Spain, like the Angleru. Um, my group set of the people is Shimano 105. It's currently got a 5034, so a compact chain set, and an 1128 cassette. Would changing the cassette to an 1134 be a good start? And from previous experience as being a pro, he asks Alex, what did they use in the mountain stages? Yeah, 1134 on the back, 
go for it. Yeah, as someone who's ridden the Angleroo, yeah, it is savage. It's absolutely savage. And well, again, the, what the pros use, I, I know from asking them at the Angleroo and also observing their bikes, what they use, and it varies from pro to pro. Some of them muscle it up with a 28, but many of them now put a 32 on. And if, if, I mean, Harry Tanfield uh, last year when they rode up the Angleroo, he even uh, put on, I think, a 34, uh, 34 combo on his bike, so a one to one ratio for that climb. Um, it, it is really tough, and so I would thoroughly recommend 34 34. I think with that, you should be all right with that one to one ratio. But, uh, well, only way is to find out and give it a go. But I would definitely say that 34 or a 32 with a 34 up front. Is the, is the way to go. Um, it, is a, it is a savage climb, that one. As I well know, it nearly killed. It's the only climb I've ever had to weave on. It's savage. Um, Xander Weemering asks, how do you know if you've got the right bib short? Like, how do you know uh, if the padding is fitting you properly? How do you get the right size? Well, if you've never owned a, a set of bib shorts before, um, this could be something that you're asking. But generally with cycling clothing, the, the piece of advice I always give people is you should think about it in terms of zero distraction. If you're wearing it and you're on a long ride and you don't notice it, it's doing its job. If it starts to irritate you and dig in in places or bunch up in places and just annoy you, then it's, something's not right about it. And that might be that that sort of brand doesn't fit you optimally or maybe you've got the wrong size but that's kind of the best way to approach it i can't really give more specific advice than that because it's so individual when it comes to clothing and what fits someone might not fit another person as well but yeah hopefully you can find a set and like i say the best thing just zero distraction remember that uh the next question is, well, two questions on the same topic. So we've got one from Stefan Hansen about latex inner tubes. Um, he says, do puncture patches work on them? And another one from Mango saying, do latex inner tubes puncture more frequently? So latex inner tubes, one of the best performance upgrades you can make in terms of bang for your buck for your bike, but they are more expensive than standard butyl tubes. Um, in terms of puncturing more often, yes and no. They, they don't puncture more often once they're set up inside the bike, because inside the wheel and they're set up properly, because the frequency of punctures is gonna be the same as if you used a butyl tube, in that it's an object piercing the tire that, that then causes the puncture. However, they are more delicate when you set them up. So you get a lot of people who accidentally break latex tubes when installing them and pumping up their tires. You have to be very careful that they're not folding back on themselves inside the tire or just getting caught underneath the bead of the tire when you pump them up and then they explode. Butyl tubes, on the other hand, are a lot more forgiving when you set them up. They're a bit more robust. Latex tubes are a bit more delicate, so just be careful on the setup. But once they're set up, should be good to go. In terms of repairing them, yes, you can patch latex tubes. And there was a reply to this comment, and this is something I've not tried, but I'm keen to try it, which is actually patching them with a piece of latex rather than a standard um, patch, which apparently works better. I'm gonna have to try that out myself, actually, and report back to you. But uh, thanks for the tip. Last question this week comes from Ed Romero, who says, should I be concerned about nicks and chips on my carbon frame? Some of them are below the paint. Should I repair them? How? Uh, well, Without seeing them or properly analysing them, it's, it's impossible for me to, to actually ascertain if they are structural damage or just cosmetic. If you're worried, the best thing to do is to take your bike to a carbon repair specialist. They'll have tools such as x-rays and things they can do to assess the damage on the frame and then advise you on appropriate action, whether that's no, it's just, you can leave it as it is, or if you're worried about the look of your bike and it's just cosmetic, they can probably fix it. I know several in the UK that are able to fix these things. Uh, a friend of mine had a custom paint job done on his bike and he just has some cosmetic scratches in it from last year and riding it around. He's actually getting that touched up by the person that custom painted it um, and that's a, a service which they offer. So if it's just cosmetic then custom paint specialists can touch things up. If you want to just touch up unsightly paint marks on your bike then you can go to um, 
uh, an, an automotive centre and they have the little touch-up paints that they use for cars and car scratches and you could try using some of those, you can colour match them. Only thing is though, is you, you're probably going to struggle to make it look like really good unless you are, you know, have amazing paint skills, uh, which I definitely don't have. Maybe get Manon to, to do it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let us know how you get on um, with that particular issue. It'd be good, so please comment and let us know of your progress. Uh, but unfortunately, that's all I've got time for this week. So apologies if I've not had time to answer your question yet, but keep them coming down below. Um, if we've missed your question in the past, just feel free to an ask it again. Hopefully we'll get round to it because it is always a pleasure ask answering your guys' questions. Um, but I'll see you in the next one, or it might be Alex. Anyway, have a good one. Bye. <laughs>